Hey, hey! This is Tiger again. Welcome to my stream where the intro of Trains in World still does not get picked up by my OBS. But at least the game itself makes its way to you. Hey, AJ! How are you doing? Uh, <coughs> I hope you are. Uh, you are still awake after the clock has been set back by one hour last night. So we are one hour later than usual, but I hope it will not be such a long stream tonight. After we have been doing a lot of PZB movies in the German train protection system and train control system, we did not look at the signaling in Germany actually, and I want to do a couple of streams about that. There are three relevant uh, signaling system in Germany and uh, I think we will do three streams about them one by one. The first one will be about the most classic one, the HV signaling system and for that we go on a very classic route the classic trek through the Spessart, the Spessart or whatever you want to call it the Main Spessartbahn from Gemünden to Aschaffenburg. At the same time I wanted to have a look at the cap car, the Bombardier cap car for the Dostos that is paired usually with a BR 146.2 or a BR 143 or a BR 112.1. This is, I think, those three combinations I have seen in the game so far. And, um, well, if you look in the forums about that, a lot of people always get mad because there are so many different versions of those vehicles in the game. Like here, the cap car to those trains. Mm. Fortunately, we can now see actually from which uh, DLC the version um, derives. So you can see we have a 767.2 cap car from Ruhrsieg Nord, Tarantarampen, Afrika Dresden, Hamburg Lübeck, Kassel Würzburg. That is the most recent one, Mein Spessart. That is the one that actually belongs to the track that we are running today. And then there is one from uh, the Rapid Transit that is the Baureihe 182 DLC, where this one comes from, it's a 767.2 as well. They are thrown into the same pot by um, Doftal Games, um, as you can see, because you can only select the 767.2 here, and then you get the 767.2 and the 766.2. They are more or less the same vehicles, but the 767 uh, has a first class compartment on the upper level what the 766.2 does not have. So which one to pick? Actually I tried a couple of them and uh, they are not always the same. They have uh, differences between them and some of them are quite annoying if you don't know that they are there, so I tried to do this run with the one that comes from the Main Spessartbahn actually, and I ran into the problem that the the brakes are not well. The brakes are releasing, but uh, the traction lock does not go away until the brakes are fully released, obviously throughout the whole train, and this can be quite annoying. So I thought, let's check the <coughs> most recent one, Schnellfahrstrecke Kassel Würzburg, mm. and. I actually want to start playing a service mm. with this train and for that I turn on the DLC, I already t turned it on and then the service, which one do we have, the correct one is already in <coughs> the 837, right, exactly. Mm. The good thing about the most recent one is that it has some switches and buttons animated now that have not been animated in the versions before. It has a working light switch again. What was the problem with the one in Tarantarampe? What was the most recent before Train Sim World 3? And um, 
Yeah, what you can see in this newish one, uh, in the most recent one, you have a traction lock override um, switch that you can actually use. Maybe it is working, I, I did not really try it out. If it is working, but this battery of switches here, they are now all animated. Operation mode switch, the front window heating, the underfloor heating, the niche heating, the air conditioner operation mode, the temperature, the fan speed, all those switches are now animated. If they actually do a lot or anything at all, I don't know. I think the operation mode switch, there is not really any sense in using a different operation mode, but this, this, this should be just here to ensure the compatibility with the different locomotives at the end. As you can see, it is only a cab car, there is no engine in it, we are just remote controlling the locomotive at the end. And this is, in this DLC, um, most of the time, at least it's the only one that I got, the Baureihe 146.2 that is working at the end and I'm never really sure well if you pick the cap car from a one DLC if you get the locomotive from the same DLC or if you get the locomotive from the DLC that you're actually running your train in or what happens if this um, DLC does not have a locomotive of this type I think you generally tend to get the locomotive that belongs to the cap car that you selected. So let's just um, start with this service, setting up this vehicle. The CIFA um, button is up here. You have a CIFA switch on some of them too. Here the CIFA fuse. It is usually already on by default on the Taranta Rampe one. It is off, so you need to switch it on here. Um, piece B can be switched on here. The traction lock override, I don't think that we have to turn it on. The headlights is already set to headlights in this vehicle on the one from Hamburg Lübeck. If you um, get confused because you're always running with red marker lights here, it's because this switch is set to tail lights on the Hamburg Lübeck one. This is funny. You should not <laughs> get the marker lights and the headlights if you switch it around like this. If you want to drive from the cab car, actually, you should set it to headlights. On some of them, you have to insert the lever to the reverser first before you can switch it to neutral and turn on the train. In all of those vehicles, you have to unlock the brakes you cannot open the doors before you not put the reverser to neutral or forward. Then you can either use the, sheep, uh, the keyboard shorts or use this selector and then this lever to actually open or close it. Here you just select if you're operating left or right or both doors. And then here you execute the command. Never forget to unlock the brakes, we already said that. Since the brakes are released upon um, switching them on, I tend to use the direct brake to hold the train in place as long as uh, we are uh, boarding passengers. The train will always have a bit of um, brake cylinder pressure as long as the doors are open, but as soon as we close them, this will go out and then the train must not roll away obviously. Here are the brake gouges. You have the big one for the Hauptluftleitung, the brake pipe, that is the uh, yellow hand. You have the red hand for the Hauptluftbehälterleitung, the main reservoir. You have this little one for the brake cylinders and you have one for the Zeitbehälter. I have not ever seen this moving. I am I cannot all. Uh, I, I, either can I explain completely correctly what the Zeitbehälter does in a brake system, but from what I understood uh, by reading it up, it um, softens a bit the, the pressure changes after releasing the brakes. And uh, well, this is, it is one more reservoir in the brake system, um, but it does not move, so I don't think that it actually works. The passenger information system works just automatically very well. 
at least on this DLC with all the vehicles that I tested. So we can just start our train. We have obviously lights, headlights normal, it's fine with me. Wipers we do not know at the moment. Yeah, correct. We should set the reversal to forward before we start. You can see on the MFD here, if the train is applying power, you can see that the PZB starting program turns on as soon as we are traveling faster than three kilometers per hour. You can see that the first aspect that we have here is uh, green over yellow without any numeral next to it. That is a signal that tells us we have to be slow after this signal and we have to not exceed 40. This is what the signal says if there is no extra numeral attached with it. We ha will have a look at this in depth later on. And now you can actually see what the problem is with the newest version here. Why did we stop now? We stopped because the CIFA came on. Usually the CIFA works in a way I will just turn off the start program so that it does not get in our way. The CIFA, as we all know, works in a way that first, every 60 seconds or whatever, uh, the light, the indicator lights up, the CIFA indicator lights up. If you then press the CIFA pedal here, then everything is okay. And if you don't, then you will get an alarm. This can be like uh, a horn or this CIFA, CIFA, CIFA text uh, recording that you get. And if you then press the CIFA pedal again, here, down here, it is CIFA pressed, then everything is okay. And only if you ignore this for too long, the indicator plus the audible warning, then the train will go into a penalty break. Here in this vehicle, as soon as the indicator lights up for the first time, you can see it here on this hand, the brake pipe gets drained. And then you can react by hitting the CIFA uh, button, but and then you can stop this draining of the brake pipe, but then you are in a traction lock and you have to apply traction again. And this is obviously annoying here. Here it happened again. I just happened to hit it in the, the moment that the indicator wanted to get on. But just have a look at it. Look at this square here. Yeah, that is not a problem. We are totally late, but we will stop this service here anyway, because I'm, I'm not doing this with this train that always um, applies a penalty break by default every 60 seconds. See, plop, indicator got on, brake pipe is drained. I hit the CIFA pedal, brake pipe is no longer drained, it will fill again, but we have a traction lock. We have to apply the traction anew. We have to reset our throttle, wait until the brake cylinder um, pressure drops, and as soon as it's beyond two bars or whatever, we can activate it again. So, so much for the demands on the forum where people ask that all the different versions should be reduced to the most recent one because that is the best one. That is true in a way, <coughs> but at least in connection with the Baureihe 146, this is a problem because the CIFA here does not work in the way that it is supposed to. Just give it another try. We are just accelerating. We're looking at the indicator here and at the same time at the yellow hand here and as soon as the indicator lights up, <laughs> the brake pipe is drained. I can counteract it if I press it fast enough, but this is not how the system is supposed to work. <coughs> yeah. And then obviously we can counteract it, but just uh, accelerating again. I hope they fix it. I think it is not a problem of, of the cap car here, it is a problem of the locomotive. What you can see here is the typical signals of the HV system 
those diagonally arranged uh, signals that are the distant signals. Yes, we start over with a different one, actually. And um, to cut it short, which one to take, because there is such a big list of diff different uh, variants. What you can totally take and use if you want to have one with a first class apartment, take the one from the Ruhr Signort. That is one of the oldest ones, but it is working perfectly, I, I, I think, in my opinion. You can also take the Taranta Rampe one. That is one without the first class department. It is a 766. Mm -hmm. I pick this one and I take a different service as well because I want to demonstrate mm. a different signaling s uh, sequence at the start because we are starting from a different platform we will get a slightly different signal here so I hope it shows we are starting very early this is why we want to start in summer mm. so that we see things better so let's go to June on a clear day mm. and start all over. But you can totally see the fun that you can have with those vehicles on, on, on the route like this it totally depends on which one you take. Whether you can release your brakes, whether you mm. can operate stuff perfectly. So, okay. Set it up properly. C for on, P set B on, and then reverse it to neutral, open the doors, let people board. Then you can go up with the setup, brake here on, the direct brake, and apply so that it holds the train in place. Check the PIS, Aschaffenburg Hauptbahnhof, that is where we want to go. Signal lights normal, what well we have learned the other day on a stream, as long as we have three lights three white lights at the front of the train, everything is good and at the end of the train we need to have two red lights. Perfect. So whether we just use the signal lights or the headlights in the reduced form, that is up to us. We must not use the high beams here like bright in the, in, in, in the station or when a train comes from the opposite direction but everything else is up to us. The main switch is still indicated as being switched off, but this will change as soon as we start. Can close our doors now. Anything else to do? Brakes are set up, reverser is set up. We just have to wait for the time. And we release the direct brake and we start our train. It's nice enough that they always let us start with the dark mode on the MFDs here, unlike the Talent 2. Can tell the signaler that we are so about to start as soon as the pressure in the brake cylinders drops. We can accelerate with about 40 to 50 kilonewtons per traction motor. It is a safe choice to accelerate this train. But we have our signal green over yellow, but this time there is a 6 attached to, it, attached to it, meaning we mustn't go faster than 60. So we switch off our PCB start program and can actually accelerate to the 60. So starting from this side of the platform allows us to start with 60. On the other side we were limited to 40. Mm, you already saw how the speed signaling works in the HV system. We're almost up to 60, just need to get across all the switches. 
tip of the train is across the switches now we have to wait for the end of the train to be across the switches well happens quite fast because our train is only 150 meters long Oops. and now we can accelerate to 110 what is line speed here here you can see a distance signal telling us that the next main signal will be green just introducing the signals a bit here you can see distance signal repeaters announcing that the next signal will be red how to distinguish distant signals and signal repeaters we will talk about that in a very short while here was a distance signal repeater telling us that the next distance signal will be green and here is the next main signal and a distance signal at the same post always telling us that things that the signals are green that we can proceed but we have to stop at the station so we are not slowing down because of the signals but because the station is ahead Langen Porzelten is the name of this station how much do we weigh today? 360 tons is the weight of the train so it is uh, ridiculous if you compare it with the freight trains that we moved last week obviously But well, it's passenger trains. And the weight of the passengers, um, I don't think that the game calculates that. It's also not so easy to calculate in real life. So, this is the first stop in Langen Prozelten. And um, I would take the opportunity to go into the theory part, the presentation about the HV signaling system in Germany. We have a couple of signaling systems in Germany, especially three of them are in use. The HV system, which is the classic signaling system. Then we have the KS system, which is the most recent system and the one that is the future system so every every uh, signal or at least every uh, every signal box and its signals that gets replaced gets replaced by KS signals we will talk about this in a different stream and then there is the HL signaling system that we have in eastern Germany that was invented in the German Democratic Republic and that is still there until the signal boxes with its signals will be replaced eventually so those three signals signaling system are the relevant ones and in the HV sig uh, signaling systems we have obviously the the old semaphore signals what which, uh, which I will not talk about today I will do this as soon as Transim World 3 or Transim World uh, will have those signals in any DLC but they are not yet and well so I just uh, cut them and I will only talk about the HV light signals and the system. I will not just show you pictures of the signals and tell you what they are called and what they uh, mean, but I will. I, I want to show you the system uh, in what sequence they are used and why it makes sense that they have names that they have and that they come in a sequence like this. And then it is, in my opinion, much more easy to memorize what they are doing so this is your track this is your train and obviously you have signals the most easiest one show a green light and everybody knows you can just pass you can drive with the maximum authorized speed the track speed and the signals do not interfere it is just clear go ahead this is called an HP main signal HP for well Hauptsignal and main signal and the number is one 
for proceed. And that you know that the signal that you are approaching is a main signal, you have mast signs. And the most common mast sign looks like this, white over red over white. If you see a signal with this mast sign, you know it is a main signal, not a distant signal, not a four signal, not a repeater, but a main signal, a block signal, a Einfahrt signal, Ausfahrt signal, uh, a main signal at any rate. It can be quite small, this thing, it can be attached next to the signals if the signals are not on a post like this one, but on a bridge or even those little ground signals that you know from the station, the, the yard areas while shunting and stuff. They can have very small mast signs of that kind and uh, they denote it nonetheless as a main signal. And uh, on the other end of the spectrum, you obviously have the red light. It can have two red lights, uh, especially in the Mein, Spe mein Spessart DLC. They often have two red lights, but it also can have only one red light. It means exactly the same. You have to stop. And this is called a HPO main signal. So one for go, zero for stop. This is the most basic uh, thing. We find that everywhere. We find that in Great Britain, we find that in the American signaling system, we have seen that even in the Federal Code of Regulations, it is stated that green means go and red means stop. So what is special about the HV? That means Hauptsignal, Vorsignal, Main Signal, Distance Signal. We have signals that warn the driver about the status of the next main signal. We have a distance signal, a four signal, and those are those funny ones with the diagonally arranged uh, lights. And green over green, it's called a VR, a four signal one, and it announces uh, main signal one. So one corresponds with one, green with green. So if the driver passes this signal, he knows the next main signal at this moment that we are passing this signal is green. So we can uh, adjust to that. Obviously the, the signal can change in the, the time the train needs to travel from the distance signal to the main signal, so the driver always needs to pay attention at the main signal, but at least he has a warning or, yeah, in this case, an assurance that at this moment at least <coughs> the signal is green. So it most probably won't have switched to red in the meantime. That the driver actually can recognize for sure a distance signal, a full-blown distance sh signal, the distance signal has this board, this sign. It is called a four-signal tafel distance signal board and it has the code NE2 for a nebensignal 2, auxiliary signal 2, if you want to, tra to translate it like this. And this tells the driver that the signal that he is just passing is a distant signal. And um, in some cases, especially on minor railroads and in some cases when you are traveling on the track that is actually usually for the traffic in the opposite direction, if you are traveling against the direction of traffic and sometimes you can come to single tra distant signal or isolated distant signal boards without any light signals attached to it. We had this in our PCB specials uh, Befehl 40 stream. Then you have to treat this board as a four signal and a four signal that announces a red signal. So, but usually most of the time you have a light signal that has this board telling you that it is actually a four signal, a distance signal, because then the driver knows when he has, when he passes a distance signal, he has about a kilometer, a kilometer left until the main signal uh, is there and uh, he passes the main signal. And this distance, this one kilometer distance on all the major railroads in Germany is called the four signal abstand, the, the distant signal distance, meaning the distance between the distant signal and the main signal, and at the same time the regular braking distance, the Regelbremsweg. So the system is built in the way that every train passing a distance signal can come to a stop within thousand meters 
so that it is still able to stop at the red signal here. So if the train gets a warning at this point that the next signal will be red and he starts applying brakes, that he will be able to stop at least in front of the next red signal. So every train running in this system needs to have brakes of an effectiveness that allows the train to stop in a distance of at least 1000 meters. That's why it's called the regular braking distance. Obviously most of the trains are able to stop in a much shorter distance here. But this is the maximum. So it needs to be ensured that the train can stop. Otherwise a warning does not make sense if the train gets a warning and it is not able to stop in, the in, in 1000 meters before he runs the red signal then the whole warning does not make a lot of sense. So if you come across those words, Regelbremsweg, regular braking distance, it is this. On major railroads it is 1000 meters, more or less. On uh, minor railroads it can be less. There are um, Bremstafeln, brake tables for Regelbremsweg of 500, 400, 300 meters. This slows everything down, obviously, because the trains need to be able to stop in this short distance. Um, so it is uh, only for minor railroads. And in the game, we always have this 1000 meter Regelbremsweg. If the main signals are not more than a kilometer apart, but are put up in the regular braking distance and obviously does not make a lot of sense to put the distance signal a couple of meters after or before the main signal you can attach it to the same post this is why you sometimes see signals that have that look like this you have a signal with one light and a signal with two lights then you can see you have a main signal and the distance signal attached to the same post right and you can see the distance signal that announces a red stop signal is the yellow one, yellow over yellow, and it's called a four signal O, O uh, corresponding with O. It is not red because you never want to uh, your driver to pass a red signal without uh, the proper caution, so it is yellow. So the yellow warns you about the red, the green warns you about the green. So you can already see one and one, O and O. What is this now? Sometimes because of the layout of the track, there are curves, there are bends, there are obstacles in the way, the driver cannot see the main signal from very far ahead and obviously the signal can change between the driver passing the distance signal until he gets to the main signal. So sometimes it makes sense to repeat the distance signal. This is why you sometimes have distance signal repeaters that show the current state of the main signal. They have the same name as the distance signal, VR1 in this case, obviously they can look like yellow over yellow if they repeat this distance signal here. But they do not have this NE2 board, they do not have a distant signal board so that the driver knows, okay, this is only a repeater and not a full-blown distance signal, which is important because if he thinks this is a distance signal, he thinks he has another thousand meters until the main signal comes. And uh, this is obviously not true. The distance here can be much shorter. So that's why he why a repeater does not have this NE2 board and why it is important that the driver can see what is a distant signal, what is only a repeater. And at the same time in the HV system, the repeater gets this little white auxiliary light uh, in the top left corner. So these two things make it, uh, yeah, enable the driver to, to distinguish a repeater from a full-blown distant signal. Just on a side note, uh, you know if you look if you watch the piece of B streams and if you're using piece of B already in the game, that you usually have only to acknowledge the magnets that are fixed to the full blown distance signals. And in the game, most of the distance signal repeaters do not have magnets. The operating rules require the driver to acknowledge the distant signal repeaters as well, even if there are no magnets. And sometimes there can be magnets even on distant signal repeaters. So if you want to drive according to the operating rules, then you have to acknowledge 
the repeaters just like the distance signals, even if you know they are just repeaters. Yeah, that is already the, the system for yellow announcing red, green announcing green, VRO announcing HPO, VR1 announcing HP1, and what is a distant signal repeater as compared to a distant signal. There is only one more aspect left, that is the HP2, and we have already seen that when we started our train. It is green over yellow, and it tells us we have to go slow. And what exactly is slow? If there is no other numeral shown with a signal, it is 40. So if you just see this signal and nothing else, you know you have to go 40 starting at this point. And it is announced by a distance signal that looks like this, just the same. Um, green over yellow in this ac ascending diagonal line. And now why does this signal here have a white light? It has a distance signal board and it has a white light. I just said, okay, this white light uh, shows us that it is a distance signal repeater. So why can a distance signal, it definitely has a distance signal board, so it is a full-blown distance signal, can have this white light. It always has a white light of that kind, this distance signal. If the distance between the distance signal and the main signal for some reason is significantly shorter than the regular braking distance. So the driver knows, oh, I cannot be sure that I have my full regular braking distance and until the next uh, main signal, but only a shorter way. And this white light should always be shown if the distance is shorter than 5% less than the regular braking distance, and this translates to less than 950 meters. Then we have a full-blown distance signal with the white light. And it is in the HV system always on the top left for the repeaters as well as for the signals that are closer to the main signal than usual. It is different in the KS system, that you only have the white light on the top left in this case, where the signal is closer to the main signal and the repeaters have the white light on the bottom left, not on the top left. But this is a different signaling system. The HV signaling system, the repeaters have it on the top left as well. So, if this signal is not supposed to tell you to go 40 max, but a different number, we need a auxiliary signal. This is, for example, one that looks like this. It can be in a triangular box, it can be in a rectangular box. The important thing is it is a white numeral on black ground. It is called a ZS3 signal, an auxiliary signal number 3. And it is announced usually on the distance signal with a ZS3V signal and the important thing about this is that it is a yellow number. So always the yellow is the warning, the white or the black is the definite sign. So if we want to announce that the driver is supposed to go not 40 at this main signal, but a different one, a different speed, then we can show this number. You know that in Germany you always have to multiply those numbers shown by 10 and then you have the kilometers per hour that you can go. So this can be 6, obviously, 5, 3, 7, 15, whatever. Like, it's 16 is obviously the max, uh, but this is never shown in a reduction here because 16 is, uh, is 160 is the speed that no train without LCB can uh, supersede or exceed uh, by law anyway. So those numbers shown here, if it is a reduction, is uh, only until 15. Here it can be 16, theoretically, but I guess you don't get it here. Um, mostly it is numbers like 6, 9, 7, sometimes 10, 12. Yeah. What is this? Those are boards that tell the driver that he is approaching a distance signal. Not only a uh, distance signal of that kind, obviously here it is the same. They can announce uh, a full-blown distance signal. They do not announce repeaters. 
they do not announce uh, distance signals that are fixed at the same post as the main signal. So this here is not announced by those uh, distance signal announcement boards or Vorsignal Barken, as they are called in German. Uh, but every other distance signal on the open track is in station areas. They are not um, not used as well. They usually look like this. Sometimes they can be actually square signs with those stripes and usually you have three of them. Like one stripe is the last one in front of the distance signal, two, three is uh, are the more distant and in some cases there can be two more. There can be four stripes and five stripes if need be, but usually the three striped one is the first that you see. And they are called NE3. You can see the distant signal board is NE2 and the NE3 are those signs. And what is nice, because every time you need to check how f far the train traveled, just for speed reductions and stuff, you need to know if the end of your train has already passed the speed changing point. The last striped uh, board should always be put in a distance of about 100 meter in front of the distance signal and the other signs should have a distance of 75 meters among them. So if you have, like we have, a train that is about 150 meters long, you can see on these boards quite easily uh, when you have traveled a length of 150 meters more easily than you can see it from the distance signal boards. What is this? A white triangle sitting on the first uh, distance signal announcement board. You get this every time you have this white light on the distant signal. So every time the distance signal is closer to the main signal than 950 meters, it has the white auxiliary light on top of here and the first announcement board should have this white triangle on top of it and uh, then the driver already knows, okay, when he passes the next distance signal, uh, the distance will be shorter. And this is more or less the whole HV signaling system as far as light signals are concerned. We only have three numbers, 0, 1 and 2. We have a main signal of every kind, red, green and green over yellow. And we have the corresponding four signal for it the yellow over yellow, zero announcing the zero red, the green over green, one announcing the one green, and the yellow ascending green uh, announcing the green over yellow, the HP2 and the four signal 2. And uh, as far as speed signaling goes, we have the ZS3 and ZS3V signals to tell us. This is how the whole system works here. And then I wanted to discuss the signs that tell us about track limits. You have seen those uh, signs everywhere telling you that starting from this point here, the track speed is 60 or 90 or whatever numeral is shown here. If it is a reduction in speed, it is called the LF7 sign. LF for langsam Fahrzeichen, uh, slow driving board. Well, it means there is a reduction. Even if it is 160, then it is al also called an LF7 sign. Um, if it is a reduction, then it will be preceded by a warning sign looking like this, a black numeral on yellow. This is important to see that it is a permanent uh, speed limit. It is called a LF6. And this is always valid until a new limit um, takes place from whatever source, be it the timetable, be it a signal, be it a new LF7 sign or whatever. It just stays valid until a new limit takes place. And not to confuse this with those signs here. That's the signs that we have already seen, the ZS3 and the ZS3V. <coughs> And that are usually shown with the main signal and the, the distance signal, but this is not necessarily so. They can be isolated. You can come um, uh, in a situation where you can see this uh, sign without a signal, or you can see the ZS3V 
attached to a main signal, not a distance signal, that is all possible. The main thing is that you do not have a black numeral on uh, yellow or a black numeral on white, but inverted. You have a yellow numeral on black or a white numeral on black. And those are speed limits that are all, all only valid in the ensuing Weichenbereich. So that means more or less throughout the interlockings that are behind those signs. And as soon as your train has cleared the interlocking area and is back on the open track, then you can go back to line speed that you can read up in your uh, timetable or from whatever source. So those speed limits end automatically, the one on the top not. They just stay valid until there is a new limit. Obviously, if uh, you use light signals, you do not necessarily need the triangular shape and you do not need the border around them. You can just have black boxes with the white numeral shown on black or the yellow numeral shown on black, at, as is the case on most signals where you fix them too. But al also those can be isolated, fixed somewhere and... Uh, you can see the important thing is yellow on black, white on black here. Two things that you must not confuse are those two arrows. Sometimes you see signs with this kind of arrow, sometimes you see signs with this kind of arrow. This kind of arrow here, the white triangle on black ground, just tells you to which track the sign uh, belongs. So usually signs are put up on the right of the track that you are running on and those are the signs that are relevant for you. But sometimes there is no room to put them on the right side so they are put up on the left side or in any other case where there can be confusion to which track the sign belongs to then you can have an arrow of that kind. It just tells you if this sign is on the left and you see this arrow you know this sign belongs to you, even though it is on the left. So they just tell you which track the sign is attached to. Unlike this arrow here, this arrow does not tell you which track the sign belongs to, but it tells you that the announced reduction in speed limit is not valid for the track in front of you but for some diverging track so that you are di if you are diverging from the main, main track to the right in this case then you will encounter a limit to six if you go straight ahead then not if you diverge to the left also not only if you diverge to the right so this is just in the future diverging then you will run into a limit and this is right now the sign belongs to the right one or the left one okay this is what i wanted to tell you today about the <laughs> hv signaling system and the speed limit boards that are usually used in connection with this and other signaling systems and we can go back to the train and see the signaling system in action we are in langen Prozelten, I think was the name of this station. And there are tons of passengers coming out of our train here. We cannot even lock our doors because people are still getting out of the train even though the boarding er, uh, time has already elapsed and we are late. We cannot go because people are still getting off the train. <laughs> don't know why they are all getting off here. Well, I guess now we can close the doors. Oh, releasing the brakes takes a bit because we applied them so hard. And then again, Starting with 40 to 50 kilonewtons is okay. So here you can see an HP1 on the left, an HP0. Here you can see the mast sign for the main signal. 
yellow over red, oh, uh, nonsense, white over red over white. Track limit is still 110 when we are starting at Langenprozelten. I will open the windows to have a bit more sound. Obviously we will not hear too much engine sound because the locomotive is at the end of the train. So we will hear mostly driving sounds. Wheels turning, some wind maybe. This makes it quite relaxed to drive from the cab car because you do not hear the engine. Here you can see one of the distant signal announcement boards and now 100 meter until we get to the distant signal distant signal board and it is a, a VR1 announcing that the next main signal is green too. We're running one kilometer regular braking distance and then we hit the main signal in the meantime, we should pass a LF7 sign showing 13, meaning we can speed up to the 130, but not before the train has passed the speed changing point. Here is the main signal now showing a HP1. And we can accelerate to the 130 now. Next stop is in Lohr am Main, 6.7 kilometers. That's a bit to go. We do not have any kind of cruise control system on our cab car here. So we have to watch and adjust the speed manually with our brakes and the throttle. Again, announcement boards, three strikes, two strikes, one strike, 100 meter, distance signal, VR1, everything okay. 1000 meters, a regular braking distance, then we hit the main signal, most probably showing a green light. Here's a repeater first, you can see the white light on the top left, another repeater, you can see that they don't have the X boards because they are only repeaters and here is the main signal and the repeaters are here because we are running through a bend and we cannot see the main signal from afar. Now we're going through a, uh, a junction on a line that allows faster travel. We get a LF7 sign showing 15 meaning we can accelerate to 150 the distance signal announcement boards show us when our train has traveled 150 meters very nicely so we can accelerate to the 150. Main signal, HP1 all clear. Now there is an announcement board ahead, uh, LF6, showing us that we have to slow down to 13, meaning 130. Distance signal announcement boards, 3, 2, 1, distance signal, all clear. I brought down the speed to 130 because soon enough we will hit a sign with a 13, like here. <coughs> Repeater. And here are signals that are put at the same mast 
main signal, distant signal and we are already slowing down for lower mine I have to say that the, this this train here it breaks like a race car. The brakes are really powerful here. Yeah. Okay, now I'm a bit late anyway, on the brakes. <coughs> if you want, at least that's what I am doing, you can switch down the brakes to 1B as long as the train is stationary. It should be enough to hold it in place most of the time. You can see this yellow stripe here on our cab car showing that this is where the first class compartment is. And off we go. Parzenstein, 5.5 five kilometers. That's the thing that, that I try to do all the time. When I'm starting from a station, I always check what is the next station and how far away. At some point you can actually turn off this thing on the top left as well. <coughs> and always just check your Buchfahrplan. So now we are warned about a reduction to 100. So it does not actually make a lot of sense to accelerate over the 100 because we would have to slow down anyway quite soon. So just accelerate to the 100 and leave it at that. We are running uphill so we will need some throttle to keep the speed. Three strikes, two strikes, one strike, distance signal, thousand meters. Here is the 100 in between. You can see that the, the warning distances for the signals and for the trackside sign ca signs can overlap, obviously then you need to keep both of them in mind and adjust your controls accordingly. Now we've traveled the one kilometer. Here is the main signal, HP1 as announced. Clear to go with line speed. And the line speed is the 100 that was shown by the LF7 sign. Since we're going uphill, we can control speed with the throttle alone. We do not need to use the brakes at all. <coughs> you can see by the heavy swaying of the cab that the engine has to work hard to push the train uphill. So you can see a new LF7 sign telling us 12, that means 120. You saw that it wasn't announced by an LF6 sign because it was not a reduction in speed limit but an increase.
so as soon as the end of the train passed this sign we were able to accelerate to 120 where well, we have almost finished now but now we are closing into the station this is a repeater white light no NE2 board and now that we are 1.2 kilometers from the station I let the train coast and then I start applying some brakes just as a rule of thumb at 800 meters I want to be at 100 kilometers at 600 meters at 80 400 meters at 60 at the sta at the platform at about 40 at 200 meters I start decelerating to 20 and from the 20 I more or less try to stop by applying full brakes at the end of the platform I have no idea how this feels if you do it like this in real life if that is just too much braking force So 20 and at well, it was already a bit too much because we're running uphill. Okay. On level ground at 25 meters, if you yank in the brakes completely when you're traveling 20, then you usually grind to a stop on the perfect position. When you're running uphill allow a bit more meat, uh, uh, some meters more, so yank it in at 22 maybe. Well we're back on timetable. Isn't it great AJ? We've made up time. And this is a nice bit here, Partenstein. There is a main signal just in front of us showing the HP1 aspect allowing us to resume with track speed. Track speed was 120 if I remember correctly. So this is what we are aiming for. Wiestal is the next station, 6.4 kilometers and still a run uphill. On dry conditions, it is totally safe to apply 50 kilonewtons per traction motor. Let's have some external shots. It is a beautiful landscape that we're running through here. Sometimes you would wish for a bit more trees on the hills that are further away. But this does not change anything at the verdict that this is a very, very beautiful DLC here. Usually when you're traveling faster than 100 kilometers it is safe to apply max power or 95% if you want to keep that edge away oh I'm already speeding the 120 I shouldn't do that didn't pay attention sorry back to below 120 three strikes two strikes one strike Distance signal, all good, all green. One kilometer regular braking distance until we had the next main signal. There comes the LF6 warning us about a res reduction to 100. 
Since we're running uphill, we can either let the train just coast and lose the momentum on its own or use the smallest amount of brake force that we can apply, the 1A. So that we are down to 100 when we hit the LF7 board. What will still happen before we get, like here, it is the 10 telling us that we have to stay below the 100 here. Some externals. Here an LF7 allowing 11 as soon as the train passed it completely. Ah, oh, this is the brake, what am I doing? Just wanted to apply some throttle. I was just trying to figure out whether AJ is still awake. Well, probably she fell asleep. Distance signal. Another train set of our kind coming from the opposite direction. Repeater. Voila. We are close to the station, but just like I said, this thing breaks like a race car. No sweat at all, slowing down to a platform speed of 40, especially when running uphill. Now we are on level ground here, I guess. Get the speed to 20. And then at 25. Oh, must. Back to 1B so that we can start faster. Can explore the surroundings a bit. It's called Vistal, but we are actually quite up, quite high up in the mountains. So I always try to figure out what they are actually doing over there to make all this smoke, but I cannot see. I suspect them to fry some sausages, I guess. Funny thing is that almost all the passengers that we had on board and Gemünden left the train in... What was it called? Propstelten? Langen Prozelten? Langen Prozelten, yeah. Almost all of them left the train there. Well, they should know what they are doing. This is one of the nice things about the Ruhr Nord, Ruhr Sieg Nord uh, version of this cab car is that it actually displays the train code, Regionalbahn 79. Not all of them are doing this on the PIS. What happened now? Oh... 
train is rolling backwards. Yo, what happened now actually? Sometimes here the brake levers for the train brake, the air brake and the electric brake which are usually connected so if you move the train brake lever the electric brake lever comes with it. Sometimes this connection gets uh, broken. Those two levers get disconnected and then it can be that the electric brake is still on even if you release the air brake then you have to release the electric brake manually either by using this lever in the modeled cap or by using the shortcuts for the dynamic brake Otherwise you cannot apply traction and your train can roll backwards like we just saw that here. So I forgot what the track limit was. We were actually at 130 here, but it will still go down a bit. So again we have a situation where we are running yeah well we can go to we can go to the 130 here. We will be warned soon enough. Heigenbrücken will be the station more or less at the summit. After Heigenbrücken we will be not mo longer running uphill, but then we will be running downhill. And then we are almost in Aschaffenburg already. So... 130 and there is an LF6 sign telling us we have to slow down to 120. Okay, this cannot be so hard. You just let the gradient work and the train coast below the 120. I like how the light looks in the trees here in this situation. Nice colors. Okay, now we get a board warning us about a reduction to 90. Well, we actually have to acknowledge PZB wise and then an H, uh, not an HP, a VR2 signal telling us that we have to expect an HP2 signal. So the next main signal will slow us down to 40. The piece at B that we had to activate getting a thousand hertz monitoring required us to slow down below the 80. Within 23 seconds you saw that was totally not a problem. I might have yanked in the brakes too hard. So we're actually almost down to the 40. Now we have to slow down at the next main. And it will be visible just like now. You can see it green over yellow with no numeral according uh, uh, accompanying it. This is an HP2 indicating 40. And at the same time we have a distance signal yellow over yellow telling us that we have to expect a stop. Again we have to acknowledge this, the yellow over yellow. And the other signs, they were irrelevant because the signals take precedence over the trackside signals. So the signals announcing a reduction to 70 and the LF7 announcing a limit of 90 starting at this point. They were irre irrelevant because we had to slow down below 40 and expect a stop. So that is what we are doing. We are expecting a stop. So we are expecting a red light on the next main what is most probably the exit signal after the station and we have to stop there anyway. This is the reason why we got the reduction to 40 
because we are going on this little siding here so that we are not in the way for trains passing the station on the main line. We are a little bit late because I slowed down too heavily after the four signal VR2. We got a 500 hertz monitoring, or is no problem at all because we are so slow anyway. Down to the 20, let the train coast into its stopping position. You can see the red light signal, the HPO, that we have to respect. And here's still a lot. <coughs> it's the right side here where you have to open your doors, although there are platforms on both sides, but the game only recognizes the doors on the right side for the boarding procedure and again this is the summit station more or less starting from here we are going through a tunnel and then we go down you're already allowed to lock the doors but the signal is still red so the dispatcher keeps us waiting maybe a different train is supposed to start before we do that. You can see after the station all the sidings are reconnected to that pair of tracks, two tracks running into the tunnel, through the tunnel. And here is a train actually that takes precedence over us. The dispatcher actually lets a freight train go first and the passenger train has to wait you can see that this signal switched to red too after the train is occup occupying the block now obviously and then we will see maybe we will be allowed to go as soon as the block is cleared again on the signals you can actually see quite nicely that every color has its own lamp so the lamps do not just change their color they do not get just a different lens or filter in front of them there are actually lamps for each color for each aspect this one might be the green over yellow if you want to show it like this and the two reds and those small reds are for the white dots for the SH1 signal that we have discussed in the PCB specials Befeel 40 stream. You can also see that the distance signals here actually have two lamps next to each other to show green and yellow in the combination that is appropriate. We can see that this patcher has obviously a liking for the freight trains, it even grants the light engine precedence over us so the light engine can go first and we still have to wait well the dispatcher is king and we wait may the dispatcher explain this to our passengers can also see this little thingy in the signal it is able to show white lights in the formation of an A or about an A or a Delta and this is another signal that can be shown that allows uh, a train to pass a red signal and then go on on site or we might look into those signals on a different stream because they are not 
specific for the HV system, but they are more or less valid in every signaling system in Germany. I'm just trying to fill the time until the dispatcher lets us go on. This is maybe the time where you would pick up this microphone here and tell the passenger on board I'm very sorry, we have to wait for a different train and now we are actually allowed to go. Signals have switched. We can apply power. Again, we see langsam fahrt 40 and at the moment we are in a restricted 500 hertz anyway that ends now we got uh, a VR zero distance signal telling us the next main signal should be red so we have to drive accordingly I acknowledged the VR zero but I did not get another 500 hertz there was obviously no active 1000 hertz magnet at this distance signal. What can happen? Actually not every distance signal has a thousand hertz magnet. Operating rules require me to acknowledge the signal anyway and obviously to respect it. Since I got uh, VR zero signal and have to expect a red signal on the next main. I also have to expect a 500 hertz PZB monitoring. This is why I'm not accelerating beyond the 60 even though the track limit is 70. Because you might remember on PZB O you must not hit the 500 hertz magnet with more than 60 otherwise you will get an immediate penalty break. You can watch the PZBO and the talented Tempomat stream or video if you want to refresh knowledge about this. Now we pass the LF712 sign. That means after the train has passed it, what should have happened now? We can accelerate to the 120 since we passed the next main signal. It was no longer red. Probably it has changed because the light engine in front of us might have diverged from the track at least. We got a clear and so we can go on and accelerate to 120. Now that we are running downhill I will take away the throttle earlier at 110 maybe and then I will use the electric brake only to manage speed. Just like or just as I would do it on a American diesel electric locomotive in sand patch grade running downhill managing speed with the dynamics and just use the electric brake here. You can see the brake power that is applied by the electric brake here on the yellow element on the NF MFD. And you can see this lever here moving. And the train brake, the air brake, stays in its position. And I'm only moving this lever here with my short, uh, keyboard, short uh, keyboard short cut. Laufach is where we have to stop 2.7 kilometers and it's a downhill run until there. No throttle, just using the electric brake to manage the speed. And when we're closing in on the station then obviously I will use the train brakes to slow down. Like electric brakes, I use them isolatedly if I just want to manage the speed to hold the train. Use it as a holding brake, not as a stopping or slowing down brake. Now 
now we're closing in on the station. Connection between the train brake lever and the e-brake lever has been re-established. I can move them as one and slow down for the stop at Laufach. 40 platform speed. Reduce brakes. Try to get That was almost too much brakes. Let the train coast into its stopping position. We're a bit late because the dispatcher gave the freight trains and the light engine precedence. We have to live with that. It's on the dispatcher, not on us. If you compare passengers getting off the train here with passengers getting off the train and at Langen Pro, Pro Zelten, you always wonder what great thing is there in Langen Pro Zelten for all the people getting off the train there. And on we go. 120 track limit is still valid. This is a repeater. You can see it from up close. This is the next main. Again, the mast sign, white over red over white showing HP1 here is a five strike announcement board uh, LF7 showing 13 meaning we can accelerate to 130 don't apply too much traction for force too fast otherwise you will get wheel slips and you will lose your acceleration force 120 we are closing in on 130 so getting the throttle down On this main signal you could see a variation of the mast sign, but it is still a main signal, mostly or mainly those variations in the mast sign tell you what you have to do if a signal, a main signal is distorted or black or in any way not functioning the way that it is expected to function, then you can determine from those mast signs what you are allowed to do, what you must do. Some of them allow you to pass them without contacting the dispatcher. Some allow you to c proceed only after contacting the dispatcher and so on. Whether you have to go on... Oh! I missed my stop. Jesus Christ! That was too much explanation. <laughs> and we just passed the station. And we did not make it, so we have to actually contact the dispatcher, ask I'm sorry I missed my station, can I set my train back? Dispatcher says, okay, you can set your train back. Or be careful. Okay, that's what we do.
right. Obviously not the stopping position that was prepared for us, but anyway, at the platform. What you can totally see is that if you are reversing, the piece of B is controlling you to 100 with a bit of a weird 1000 Hz monitoring. As soon as we're going forward, we will be in a start program again. Okay, the delay is no longer on the dispatcher, it is on us exclusively because, or on me, because I missed the station. Due to lengthy explanations about mast signs. That's a nice mixed freight trains. Actually, this DLC is most famous for its freight trains battling the gradient here. We can release from the starting program because the next main signal is a green one allowing us to go full track speed. Full track speed is I think 130 here at this point. It is actually 140 already. And we're actually getting into that part of the track where we can go 160. Starting here, LF7 sign with 16. What is the highest number that you can read on an LF7 sign? Because the law prohibits every train not running under LZB going faster than 160. So obviously signals cannot allow a speed of more than 160. One hundred and sixty to Aschaffenburg. Announcement two, one hundred and fifty, okay. That is not the harshest of all reductions. Another reduction incoming to 130 and, and here is actually, did you see it, a VR2 announcing a reduction to 60, piece B requires us to slow down below the 80 within the 23 seconds and then we have the rest of the kilometer, the regular braking distance to slow down to the 60 that were announced by the VR2 distance signal. The 11 here is not really relevant anymore. And here around the bend there is, as you can see, the HP2 announcing the 60 and we get a VRO announcing a stop. So we have to acknowledge the VRO signal and can go on with 60 into our parking position. Because as soon as we hit the 500 hertz, 60 is good, and then we can slow down to 40 so that the 500 hertz doesn't stop us. This is a Schaffenburg station. This is where the platform start.
bring down the speed to about 40 and let it coast soon enough we will get the 500 Hertz you can already see it coming up but we are already below the 40 so the 500 Hertz will not get us this is most probably the 500 Hertz magnet Blop, there it is from a speed of 20 at uh, now at least we stop with a 500 point stop out of the 20 kilometers the PIS does not show any delay well anyway we have been a bit late but this is because of the dispatcher in Heigenbrücken allowing the freight trains to take precedence and then me missing the station in what was it Hüchach Hösbach because of an explanation of mass signs maybe I should make a stream that is dedicated to mass signs completely that is the sur that is the service for today so what is our stop accuracy quite nice except for Hösbach obviously and with this a view on a Schaffenburg station I will end this stream here thank you very much for watching this was the first stream in a row covering the German signaling system covering the HV light signals the classic system especially in Western Germany and how to deal with it I think it is not so super complicated quite intu intuitive and next time I think we will have a look at the KS system and how it locks in with this system that we learned about today. Thank you very much for watching, take care and see you around.